And good morning, 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 YouTube. The old soldier coming at you from Robinson County, North Carolina, once again on a cold morning downhill. Yes, I said cold, but not cloudy. As you can see we've actually got a relatively good amount of ambient light inside the vehicle today. The outside is not so cloudy, so cool. But anywho, anyhow, anyway, let's get to work, you know. I, I don't really call what I do work. I actually enjoy it. I actually enjoy it. But, uh, so, what are we going to Bit, rant and rave about today. There's all kinds of stuff we can talk about. Uh, but I'm going to take a minute to talk about Aunt Becky. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the actress that played uh, Aunt Becky from Full House. And then Fuller House. And she's full of it, House. Um, why do I want to talk about that? Well, I just do. Let's just leave it at that. Again, it's, it's a situation where people abuse or the abuse of power. Okay. The sad part about it is some of these people have been caught up in it. The same crowd of people that have accused our current president of the same thing, you know. Like, mm -hmm. Ain't this the pot calling the kettle black or burnt? You choose the term there. Um, I was reading or watching, you know, a little bit on the news this morning. Uh, you know, additional charges about to be filed against her. You know, uh, Felicity Hoffman. She kind of said, "Oh, yeah, you got my hand in the cookie jar." I, I you know, and, and she actually showed, you know, she actually showed some remorse for what she did. I, but. Lori, Lori Lachlan, I think's her name, hasn't really shown any remorse. Um, you know, and granted, she's in trial now, so, you know, innocent until proven otherwise. Um, but one of the charges her and her husband are facing is money laundering. Money laundering. Now, that ladies and gentlemen can carry some serious time behind bars it's not just some little chump change charge where she gets convicted of she might do 30 days in Hooskow and then you know be let out no you're talking about federal felony weight charges and why am I you know and again why did I get on the subject one it was in the news but two more importantly goes to show that people with money and power can become corrupt. Now the reciprocal of that is you've got people that have money that use it for good and, and are responsible stewards of that money. There's an old adage, with great wealth comes great responsibility. Some people like to term it, with great wealth comes great power and great responsibility. Um, I, I personally don't like to put the power into the equation because with it comes the temptation to do evil. Um, just because you have the power and ability to do something does not make it right. But again, how does this play into what's going on in our nation today? Well, there's a group of people of like mind thought as she that, that think they're above things. Um, it's the same crowd that, that would like to give amnesty to every illegal immigrant that has come across the nation's borders. Just flat out amnesty and citizenship for all. Uh, thought to myself, well that's, you know, that's really a slap in the face to the millions and millions that came over and went through the full blown naturalization process um, 
yes, there are there are individual and unique cases of those that are seeking political asylum or, or seeking asylum based on circumstances in their home country. Um, I, I will be the first one to tell you that that that, that, that does happen. case an example first Gulf War during the first Gulf War many Kurds were being slaughtered you don't hear the mainstream media talk about this either many of the Kurds were being slaughtered by the Iraqi army okay. Saddam Hussein used chemical weapons on his own people so we set up an operation in northern Turkey or southern Turkey to bring the Kurds across and then get them to the US as many as we could we knew if they stayed in Kurdistan that they would be you know, they would have been eradicated uh, and honestly you know we, we, needed, we needed to use the same approach or needed to use the same approach years gone by with the Armenians oh, oh soldier who the Armenians well go back and look in history Armenians were another indigenous group in the Turkish part of the world that were wholesale slaughtered by the Turkish army during, during World War One. It's a, a massacre of people that we don't often hear about or talk about anymore. Um, and it's sad. It truly is sad. Uh, and how's this all tied to what it started with? It, it, again, it goes to you get a group of people who think that they are the elite and don't get me wrong I'm sure Ms. Lachlan and her husband worked hard for the money they got you know she has made some great TV shows I won't take that away from her um, obviously her and her husband have invested their money wisely and you don't make a payment of $520,000 uh, without having the money somewhere Say it. But it's another example of when you are led to believe that because you have this type of wealth, this type of power, that you can get away with whatever you want without repercussions. And I and Laura Lachlan and Felicity Hoffman are not the only ones involved in this. Um, there's several others. But you know, it, it's the buying of influence. Um, Certainly, it still happens. It happens every day in business. You know, I've got a product that I want to sell to your company, and I, I don't want you to buy from any other company. How can I sweeten the pot to make sure that happens? People do it with government contracts. Okay. I used to work for the government. GSA, Government Service Administration. I don't know who they got doing their contracts, but um, that's one that the IRS and the federal government really need to do a long, hard look at, folks. When I used to have to purchase things for the organization I worked for. Case example, I had to buy shredders one year. The Department of the Army come out with a directive that every organization had to have cross-cut shredders. Well, I had to buy like 15 of them with government credit card. So I had to go on the Government Service Administration website. They got a catalog. You can find, and you can, you can find fire engines for sale on that website. Uh, it's like a centralized buying activity for all government activities. GSA Advantage, that's what it's called. So I find the, the recommended make and model that they wanted us to get, and I entered it in the search engine, and I got 215 vendors that carried it. The cheapest vendor had them for, I think it was $250 a piece. high-end vendor had it going for $800 a piece. Same make, same model. 
So I, I select the number I need, and I went with the cheapest vendor. Why? I was supposed to be a good steward of the taxpayer's dollars. I get this warning message. You're a Department of the Army person. You're supposed to buy from this vendor because you have a blanket purchase agreement with them. Well, I go and I look that vendor's up. Dude wanted twice as much for his as the other vendor that I selected. I went ahead and proceeded with my purchase with the, the lowest vendor, you know, the lowest price vendor. I give a nasty gram that I need to generate a letter of justification why I bought from this vendor, not the one with the blanket purchase agreement. That's the rigmarole that you had to go through with GSA Advantage when you bought and you were looking on the activity and the product and the whole nine yards. The point I'm getting at is some of these businesses were locking in prices that they know were ridiculously high, but they knew they could get a government contract to buy off on it. Can I go back and prove that they actually did that? No. But I, I'm almost certain some, some type of undue influence was used to get some of that business. And, on, and businesses, they, they, they lobby other businesses. I, I get that. You, you've got to go and sell yourself. And you've got to make things lucrative for the other business. It's just how it is. That's called free market society. Um, but at the end of the day, when you start doing things that are unethical, i.e. Lori Logman, Felicity Hoffman, um, it begins to put a divide, too. That's the, other, that's the other half of this talk this morning. Is now creates a divide of the haves and the have-nots. Uh, basically what she says, I have, so we will, and you don't, so you won't, mentality. Uh, because I'm a firm believer that we all have the opportunity to uh, achieve as high as we wish or stay where we're at. Don't care for the whole belief that everybody has a station in life. Never have. My dad was in the army in the fifties. He was an enlisted man, non-commissioned officer. In his time in the army, there was still a distinct separation between the officers and the enlisted, as far as social gatherings and, and I understand the need for that even today um, but in his time I remember him telling me stories where certain there were certain officers he had to serve under that kind of held it over them that you you certain so and so you're just you're just a, a hillbilly from Tennessee that that okay good for you you got your GED but that's as far as you're gonna go in life My dad also had some great leaders now, and some great leaders that encouraged him to to achieve and push and study and educate himself. My point being is, it's, it's not about the occupation or the business, it's about the individual and what they let power do to their mindset. Because we've got politicians that are absolutely the same way. There's one right now that's running for president. Her name's Kamala Harris. She just got to me, she's arrogant. Just flat out arrogant. But worse yet, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton was more arrogant than her. The thought and mindset that she ought to have been president. The fact that when she lost, she didn't even have the, the gumption to come out, or not the gumption, but she didn't have the, the, the courage, if you will, to come out and let her her supporters know that it was over. She had to send out a spokesman to, to let everybody know. Uh, but again, another one that power corrupted. How's this all tie in? Well, it ties to, the, to this. We all have inalienable rights. Okay? We all have the right to live. 
have the right to defend ourselves. We have the right to provide for ourselves. You're saying to yourself, okay, well, what, what are you getting at? Well, this is what I'm getting at. That in the exercise of our rights for our own selves, the moment they begin to infringe on the rights of others, we have crossed a line. Now, case being an example, the school that Ms. Lachlan, Ms. Lachlan was trying to basically bribe from what the accusations say uh, to get her kids into, along with all the others, um, deprived, probably, I can speculate, and it's a good speculation, that it probably deprived some other student the opportunity to get into this school. Likewise, the same can be said when you lower standards because you don't have enough of one category of people or another at a school. That has been argued for years. Um, and there's some truth to that as well. Standards are set for a reason. But when you try to surpass the system by means of illegal and unethical influence, um, you have just lost your ability to act responsibly in any other measure when it comes to in, you know, your influence. No, I'm not knocking anybody that's got wealth you've worked for it and you've earned it good to you I've got no issue with that I guess what I've got issue with is when you take that wealth and you use it unethically to for your own gain I get it now Lori and her husband they were trying to do it for their children but still at the end of the day you're teaching your children that it's okay to bribe or otherwise cheat your way through the system and I have seen that, I've seen that happen when I was in the Army. Now, there's, I've got comrades of mine that would probably tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, but you know what? So be it, let them say that. I know what I saw and witnessed, and, and who knows? At the time, I might even have been a part of it. I'm not perfect, okay? I am not perfect. But I've seen groups of people excel in the Army because they were PT studs and they knew how to iron a uniform and shine boots. So have had leadership that, that has thought, well, that's what makes a good soldier. He maxed his PT test and then his boots are shiny and his uniform starts to press, he's got a good haircut. And he can scream real loud and make people do things. Well, he's a good leader. But get him out on the gun line and don't know the first fire command standard to save his life, don't know the first thing about an occupation of a howitzer or how to have it properly in place. Hmm. That's why the Army wants all their leaders to be technically and tactically proficient. But I've known many that have failed in that category, and most of them, uh, well, I'm not saying most of them, but some of them don't slip through the cracks. They, they get to a point that they, you know, actions eventually catch up to them. Again, I'm not perfect. I had my faults. No, I did. Um, the difference being was maybe I cared too much. I don't know. Um, But at the end of the day, I'm just saying that any organization is not perfect. Every organization is subject to the you know, abuse of power. Um, in some places, case example, county sheriff's departments. A lot of places where the sheriff is an elected official. The moment a new sheriff's elected, especially if it's from the opposition, you'll see whole departments change out which I don't think is right. 
just because I didn't vote for you doesn't mean I still won't make you a good employee. I've seen that happen. So yeah, I guess the moral of today's lesson is if you've got the ability, use it wisely and use it appropriately. That being said, we will close out today's rants and raves. Just want to say God bless each and every one of you. Remember our men and women who fight and defend our nation each and every day, both foreign, both overseas and here domestically with our law enforcement. Um, remember their families as well. Also, charities I'd ask you to help out. Tunnels to Towers.org. Pin up for vets, ballot for veterans. Vendors, I'd ask you to support Money Quick Pawn Rate for Road here in Fayetteville, North Carolina area. Um, Robert's Custom Woodwork and Unsung Patriot. Get a chance, go buy some of their products. They'd appreciate it. I'd appreciate it. If you haven't done so, check out my t shirts and sweatshirts. See if it's something that you like. If you don't like the design on it, tell me in the comments below what you want to see on a t shirt or sweatshirt. I'll try my best to put put that on there for you um if you like my poems and my poetry just reach out on my amazon site and, and, and purchase one or two of the books but with that being said folks god bless take care and until tomorrow the soul soul drought